of the Vanity Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's the Illinois State Redbirds versus the Alabama Crimson Tide. And Illinois State. Hello, everybody. I'm Frank Fallon with my broadcast partner, Gary Thompson. Well, Gary, we've got the number eight seed in Illinois State and the number nine seed in Alabama in the Midwest Regional, so it ought to be a pretty close ball game. Well, I think this should be one heck of a ball game, Frank. Uh, everybody thinks Alabama's up tempo and Bob Donawal's team uh, wants to sit on the ball, but keep in mind, Illinois State has shot the ball more times this year than Alabama, so that should tell you something. Well, we have the Southeastern Conference represented by Alabama and, of course, the Missouri Valley Conference represented by Illinois State. Here's how these two teams got to this level of play. Well, the Alabama Crimson Tide, they wound up number five in the SEC and were one of four teams selected from that league to play in NCAA action. They reached the semifinals and the finals of the NCAA SEC tournament, losing to Kentucky by two points. For Illinois State's club, they were the co-champions of the Missouri Valley Conference with Tulsa and were defeated in the semifinals of the tournament. So tonight, Gary, we have what amounts to two at-large representatives. And we've also got two fine players this ball game that are inside players, Frank. Both effective inside. First of all, for Alabama, Bobby Lee Hurt. He's their leading rebounder, their second leading scorer, an all-Southeast Conference performer, first-teamer, two years running. He's a great scorer inside, shoots 66% from the field. That's third best in the nation and will probably set a Southeast Conference record this year. And for Illinois State, their man inside, Hank Cornley, 6'7", senior, four-year starter. He's tough inside, likes to get the ball, draws a lot of fouls inside. He's their 10th all-time scorer and 12th all-time rebounder. And as he goes, so goes the Redbirds. He comes off of two subpar ball games for Illinois State in the Missouri Valley Tournament, so he needs a big one tonight. Well, as always, when you reach this level of competition, the coaches are high-profile people. Wimp Sanderson at the University of Alabama has been part of the coaching scene there now since the summer of 1960. This is his fourth year as the head coach at the University of Alabama, a record this year of 18 and 11. His counterpart, Bob Donawal, at Illinois State, is one of 16 former Bobby Knight assistants who are head coaches at the Division I level. And Bob Donawald has the best one-loss record of any of those 16 coaches. Well, Gary, what about the guy who wins here tonight? He's got quite a reward, doesn't he? Well, he goes up against DePaul, and ironically enough, both these clubs have played DePaul and both lost. Well, it'll be Illinois State, the Redbirds, from the Missouri Valley Conference and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Before we'll have the introduction of the starting lineups, Jim Miller is the public address announcer here. So let's go to Jim for the introduction to the starters. Thank you, Frank, and welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's game. First, the forwards. For Alabama, number 32, Buck Johnson. For Illinois State, number 52, Hank Cornley. For Alabama, number 41, Terry Williams. For Illinois State, number 43, Lou Stefanovic. And now the centers. For Alabama, number 34, Bobby Lee Hurts. For Illinois State, number 45, Mark Zwart. Now let's meet the guards. For Alabama, number 11, Eric Richardson. For Illinois State, number 10, Michael McKinney. For Alabama, number 30, Terry Connor. And for Illinois State, number 24, Ricky Johnson. Alabama is coached by Wimp Sanderson. And Bob Donawald is the coach for Illinois State. All right, let's meet the men who will officiate tonight's ball game. The fellow in the middle is Booker Turner, a veteran from the Pac-10, 
And on his right is Ron Spittler from the Big Eight. And on the left is Glenn Shemple from the Atlantic 10. And Gary, you had to work at it a little bit, but you got him to smile, didn't you? <laughs> I was giving him the business across the way. I know two of the three very well. Gary, we might explain why Illinois State's wearing the white and Alabama's wearing the dark uniforms. Well, they're designated by the seedings to the home team. And uh, here we got uh, Illinois State, a little higher seed coming in. And so they get the home doesn't mean anything. <laughs> no. I heard where you said what uniform. Right. Then there's no fuss about what color uniform you're going to wear. Mark Swart at 6'8 jumps against Bobby Lee Hurt of Alabama, who is 6 feet 9. Alabama comes up with the opening tip. That's Terry Connor. Just getting started. This is Terry Williams. Bobby Lee Hurt. Boy, that guy is hitting him at 67 percent. Frank Fallon with Gary Thompson just getting underway in the Midwest Regional here at the Devaney Center in Lincoln, Nebraska with a 2-0 quick Alabama lead on the basket by Bobby Lee Hurt over Illinois State. And Ricky Johnson shooting and missing, and Hurt gets the first rebound of the ball game. Alabama likes to run. This is Eric Richardson. Down low to Buck Johnson. How about the Illinois State defense, Gary? Well, Illinois State always will play man for man. Uh, Bob Donwell's been there four years, and they played nothing but man for man. Of course, a disciple of Bobby Knight. Uh, that speaks for itself. Terry Williams, a 6'10 guard forward. Is he playing guard or forward tonight, Gary? Well, he's at the forward spot tonight. Uh, only in the last seven ball games, uh, Connor, number 30, has started at that guard spot. But he's a big 6'10 guard. He can shoot the ball well outside and also rebound, as you see right there. Terry Williams grabs the rebound. So Alabama's made their first two shots. Illinois State has missed their first two. And the Crimson Tide lead by a score of 4 nothing. This is Terry Williams at 6'10", works against Cornley. I think Alabama likes to play against the man-for-man uh, -man better, and, of course, they're going to get that with Illinois State. They're not uh, blessed with the best shooting guards from outside, perimeter shooting. Guards like to penetrate. Eric Richardson, number 11, to Terry Williams, and another assist. That is three shots for Alabama, and three of them have gone down. The assist goes to Eric Richardson, who averages about seven per ball game for Alabama, and it's suddenly 6-0. Ricky Johnson, Michael McKinney, Lou Stefanovic, air ball to Mark Swart. Alabama seems a little bit more poised in the opening going, don't they, Gary? Well, I think so right here. Of course, Illinois State, uh, they're a veteran ball club too, though, and they come in here uh, co-champions of the Missouri Valley. So they know how to play, but a game like this, it's easy for a team to come up uh, tight. Illinois State missing, but the shot put back up and in by Hank Cornley. And just as you said, as we look at Bob Donawald, he's a guy who works well inside. And we said Cornley, uh, right, has got to do a job for them tonight. He comes off of two subpar games, and uh, he just has to do it for them, scoring and rebounding. Buck Johnson, the sophomore from Birmingham and Alabama, has not missed. They've been down the floor four times, and they have four baskets to show for their trouble. There is Wimp Sanderson and Silas McKinney, his assistant. Couldn't tell it by Wimp that they'd hit four in a row, had you? Oh. <laughs> get Ricky Johnson. You've got Alabama in a 3-2 zone, and you notice Williams will sink back in the middle, try and cover up on the big people inside. Mark Swart, who has really come on strong for Illinois State, only averaged about five points a ball game the early part of the year, but I think, Gary, they told us yesterday he's averaged about 12 a ball game in his last six games. That's right. The people have been doubling up a lot on Cornley, leaving him free, and uh, he's been their top scorer, in fact, the last two ball games. It's 8-4 Alabama. We are three minutes and 20 seconds into the game. This is Bobby Lee Hurt over Zwart. Zwart with a rebound. That's the first miss by Alabama. They hit four out of their first five shots. Ricky Johnson, who's a great penetrator. Michael McKinney. Cornley from 15 feet. Going to be short. And oh, what a rebound by Terry Williams. He's, oh, and gets it right back to front of it. And this is the shot. Good heads up play by Stevanovich, though. They're sneaking inside and getting the uh, interception and the steal. Gary, do you see either team having any particular advantage as far as a bench is concerned? Well, I don't think so. Neither one goes to the bench very deep. About six or seven players is the most. Bobby Lee Hurt draws the first foul of the ball game. Let's take a look at that foul before Wimp Sanderson approves it or disapproves it. You see him go down inside. Buck 
Johnson goes up with a shot. The ball comes off, and here you see Hurt over the top of Zwart. So Illinois State, back from right to left. Michael McKinney with the ball. This is Ricky Johnson. McKinney from 18 feet. Shoots kind of a knuckleball, doesn't he? Not much rotation on it. And here comes Illinois State on the steal. That's a turnover. And we get a foul away from the ball on, I believe, Eric Richardson. And really, I think uh, Donawal's uh, maybe strategy here is Alabama likes to run. They're really clamping on the outlet pass and looking to, to jam it, probably keep the break from getting started. And in turn, they've come up with a couple of uh, steals. Alabama's turned the ball over twice. Illinois State has not been guilty of a turnover yet. This is Lou Stefanovic, S-T-E-F-A-N-O-V-I-C, 6'8", junior, out of Merrillville, Indiana. Michael McKinney. And speaking of bench, if uh, the Redbirds struggle a little bit against his zone, you're liable to see real quick uh, Brad Duncan. He's an excellent outside shooter, just doesn't know any range to his shooting. This is Mark Zwart. Ricky Johnson. Cornley, and another one for Hank Cornley. And suddenly Illinois State is right back in it. It is 8-6. We are almost five minutes into the ball game. Alabama up by two. And we're attacking that 3-2 uh, zone along the baseline. Cornley likes to work the middle block to block, but he's extending out on that baseline. He's been open for two shots. Richardson thought better of the shot, moves in on McKinney, and now takes it and hits it. Alabama shooting very, very well. Both of these teams came in hitting just a little bit better than 50% of their shots from the field. Well, Eric Richardson's kind of been hidden behind Ennis Watley the last couple of years and hasn't got his due, but he's an excellent point guard, led the Southeast Conference in assists. Ricky Johnson shooting and missing, and Terry Williams rebounding again for Alabama. Illinois State not getting many second shots, Gary, out of that, uh, against that Bama zone. No, Eric, they, excuse me. Eric Richardson on the bucket. And Alabama must be shooting about 80% at this point. They lead it 12 to 6. Both clubs come into the into this ball game shooting percentage only a tenth apart. 50.7 for Illinois State and 50.6 for Alabama. This is McKinney, Ricky Johnson, Stefanovic along that baseline. Kansas. He's one of the other kids that they rely on against the zone to score outside. Now, Gary, kind of interesting at this juncture, the first eight points for Illinois State have all been scored by their big men. Their two guards have not hit on anything outside. No, they like uh, those guards like to penetrate and get it inside. Terry Williams with a shot missed. Hank Cornley with a rebound for Illinois State. Both of these teams played DePaul early. Both lost by narrow margins. Alabama, I believe, by one and Illinois State by three. And the winner of this game will play DePaul as Cornley shoots and misses and Stefanovic there with great offensive rebounding position. You know, I'm talking to their coaching staff before the ball game as they rebound better out of... Uh, a zone situation when they're being played against by a zone. They're a stronger offensive rebounding club and Zwart and uh, Harry Connor with an air ball. Well, we played almost seven minutes and it's 12-10 in favor of Alabama. We're going to get our first sub of the ball game. Daryl Neal, a 6'8 sophomore, is coming in for Alabama, number 40. Youngster from Los Angeles, transfer student. Terry Connor checks out for the Crimson Tide. That's our first substitute. Well, the clock shows 13 minutes and 18 seconds remaining to play in the first half of this Midwest Regional. We have a timeout on the court with our score, Alabama 12 and Illinois State 10. There's some other games in the East Regional in the second half. It is Northeastern leading Virginia Commonwealth by two, 56-54. That's in the East Regional. And also we have Louisville and Moorhead State playing in the second half with Louisville leading Moorhead State 24 or 34 to 28. We're about seven minutes into the first half. Alabama jumped out to a quick lead and has stayed in front of Illinois State, although the margin now is 2, 12 to 10. With 13, 18 to play in the first half. Alabama in the dark or red uniforms. Illinois State in the white, trimmed in red. Bama with the ball. New face in the lineup for Alabama, as we told you a moment ago. Number 40, Daryl Neal. This is Eric Richardson. And Neal, he started 24 ball games uh, for this ball club. Of course, he was always starting when it was the big club that he, that Rip Sanderson went with. Eric Richardson, number 11. Good man-for-man -man defense by Illinois State. And good check off there by Cornwell. Air ball pulled down by Illinois State. Michael McKinney back in the forecourt. 15-footer on the move. 
That knuckleball went in that time. And that's what McKinney likes to do right there. Those guards for Illinois State like to penetrate, get in even as deep as the paint, and either take the shot, draw the defense, and drop off. Well, it's the first time we've been tied since the opening tip-off. We're tied at 12, 12 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Alabama, Illinois State, Midwest Regional, Bob Devaney Sports Center, Lincoln, Nebraska. Winner plays DePaul on Sunday. Time Alabama going with uh, Hurt from high post to low, trying to hit him on a pass or go in the corner right there and down inside. Mark Fort doing a good job and a good defensive rebound by the 6'5 guard, Ricky Johnson. Hurt that time a little deep on the baseline, did not have the angle of the basket, actually had to kind of jump in. It was a tough shot. Illinois State has a chance to go in front for the first time in this ballgame. Oh, what nice penetration by Ricky Johnson. He saw a sliver of daylight, Gary, and it was gone. They said he can get through the tiniest crack there is at any kind of a defense. And we mentioned those guards like to penetrate. That's their game, and they can penetrate against the zone. Of course, that's always effective if you can penetrate against the zone. And not always like that can you get to the basket or the drive on a solo. Buck Johnson back to Richardson from 21 feet. We're tied again. Eric Richardson now leads all scores with six points. And that is the second time that we've been tied. We were tied at 12, now again at 14. Every man in the Illinois State lineup now has scored a basket. Every one of their starters has at least one bucket. McKinney, Ricky Johnson, Cornley. McKinney, good pass from Cornley. And, oh, that one, the bottom of the cord hardly moved on that bucket. It's almost like a knuckleball. It is no rotation at all, and it's unusual to see a guy sh shoot that. Well, he's 50.6% from the field. Incidentally, if Ricky Johnson goes to the free throw line, we want to try to give you a close-up look at his hands. A uh, most unusual-looking free throw you've seen in a long time. It's 16-14, Illinois State in front. You notice sometimes you look at Illinois State and you always say, hey, they're in a zone, but they play man for man and make the drops that some zone principle there and really help. Daryl Neal shooting and missing. Illinois State back on the run. This is Stefanovic from 18 feet. Ball tipped up. Zwart gets it up and in. Well, Zwart doing a good job on the offensive boards. And we saw that possession where Illinois State comes out running. People think of uh, Illinois State as maybe a possession ball club control. But they look for that break. The smart thing about it, they don't have it. They look to set it up and get in their offense. Well, the Redbirds have their biggest lead of the night. Four points, 18 to 14, with 10, 19 to play. This is Terry Williams. Buck Johnson beating it back to Buck. And those shots that were going down for Alabama early are not now, and the Illinois State is coming off with the defensive boards. Illinois State doing a good job of checking off. Oh, big screen offered by Zwart. Stefanovic couldn't get the shot to go, and Williams grabbed the rebound. Alabama down by four. Eric Richardson, who leads the SEC with seven assists per ball game, looking to feed somebody down low. Boy, have some real shoving going on down low with Hurts. And I think he may have been fouled. Fouled by Zwart. That will be the first foul on Mark Zwart and the first one on Northern on Illinois State. You're going to be in trouble if you get uh, hurt down that low and that close to the basket. And he's Zwart that time catching him across the arm. As, uh, hurt. 66% from the field. Mark Farmer, who is the biggest man on the Alabama team, 6'11", 245, number 53 from Arab, Alabama. Checks in and Buck Johnson comes out. So the tide getting hurt a little bit on the boards, Gary, puts some more size in there. And Farmer, uh, uh, probably better on the defensive end, had probably his best ball game last year against UCLA when he held Stewart Gray to seven points. Shouldn't be any surprise to see anybody on these teams sink free throws. Hurt is a 71% free throw shooter himself. 6'9", 240-pound junior from Huntsville. It's a pair, and he has four points. And we're going to have a call timeout. So the clock is stopped with nine minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first half. It's a two-point lead for the Illinois State Redbirds of the Missouri Valley Conference. As they lead the Alabama Crimson Tide 18-16, 9.45 to play. We are at the Bob Devaney Sports Center on the campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. First of two here tonight. This game will be followed by a game between Kansas and Alcorn State. All right, Illinois State started out very slowly. Alabama hit six out of their first ten shots. Illinois State fell behind by six, but they now come back and they lead by two. It looked like Alabama that time started out in a 1-3-1, changed their zone. Stefanovic driving, feeds it off to Ricky Johnson. Now Michael McKinney again. 
And Cornley keeps the ball alive and takes the rebound down. Illinois State is doing a great job uh, on the offensive boards. And Bama's got some size in there. There's that funny looking shot by Ricky Johnson. A little bit short and hurt. Rebounds it for Alabama. Alabama has 6'11", 6 6'9", 6 and 6'10". In the lineup right now, so they can't get much bigger. This is Eric Richardson. Terry Williams with yet another bucket. That's his third. He's got six, and we are tied again. Tied for the third time of the ball game at 18. Illinois State's got up 22 shots compared to Alabama's 15. Fine move by Cornley, and a great follow by Lou Stefanovich. Six points for Stefanovich, and it's 20 to 18 in favor of Illinois State. Frank Fallon with Gary Thompson at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. We have 8 minutes, 16 seconds to play in the first half of this Midwest Regional game. With Illinois State leading Alabama, 20 to 18. And Bobby Hurt getting a big rebound for Bama and tying it up at 20. That is the sixth point of the night for the 6'9", 240-pound junior. Hurt really going to the offensive board that time. He came a long way to get that rebound and able to stick it back. Our game has been tied now on four occasions. The largest lead has been a six-point lead by Alabama early. We get a foul away from the ball. Called by Booker Turner, our referee from the Pac-10. Buck Johnson coming back in the lineup now for Alabama. And the foul is on Mark Farmer of Alabama. That is his first, number three, against the tie. One foul against Illinois State. We're tied at 20. We've been tied at 12, 14, 18, and now 20. Winner of this game will play DePaul on Sunday. Alabama starting out hitting 46%. Illinois State shooting 40%. And Alabama cooled out a great deal, didn't they, Gary? Yes, they did. And they're matching up in this defense. They started out 1-3-1. One, one. We said 3-2. And now they've gone 1-3-1, one, one, trying to cut off some of that baseline shooting. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. We got a foul, I believe, on Zwart. That'll be his second. That's two fouls against Illinois State. Both have come against the 6'8", 215-pound senior from Monona, Wisconsin, Mark Zwart. Look at Mark right there. Good shot him. Second personal foul, a three-year starter. And a great student, I understand, too. Well, the, the, before he had this run of scoring, they said he finally got his scoring up to his grade point average. So that really speaks well for his, his grade point. About He's averaging about three, five, or six. I think he is a speech communications major, too. Way outside. The shot put up by Daryl Neal and oh. back in by Bobby Lee Hurt. And Hurt now leads all scores with eight points. And Wimp Sanderson like that. He's up clapping and Hurt just kind of out muscled toward that time for the rebound. Seven minutes to play in the first half. Midwest Regional, Alabama and Illinois State. McKinney, good penetration and a good feed inside to Cornley. And Cornley has six. McKinney, their top assist man. You see what? Good drive. That against the zone, you can penetrate, may not be able to go all the way, but look for that, that open man as the zone recovers. We're tied for the fifth time now here in the first half at 22 with six and a half minutes remaining to play. Buck Johnson, turnarounder over Cornley, too strong. Swart with another good defensive rebound. You notice Swart that time, not a big jumper. He just had position and had the man pinned right on his back. And not exceptionally big at 215 pounds, giving away a lot of size to Bobby Lee Hurt underneath. But he uh, got position on him. Zwart, nice hook shot in the lane by Mark Zwart. Illinois State out rebounding Bama early, 13 to 8. But that's the old fashioned hook shot. You don't see that too much anymore, Gary. No, they told us to be watching for that. Zwart can hook and he likes to uh, take that shot along the baseline. The miss by Richardson and the rebound comes down to Illinois State. 24 22 in favor of the Redbirds over the Crimson Tide. Under six minutes to play in the half. What a move down the lane by Johnson, and what a rejection by Bobby Lee Hurt. Well, Hurt leads this club and block shots, 41. Well, uh, Ricky Johnson at 6'5", got in the forest that time, and one of the Sequoias, and Mark Ward has just picked up his third foul. He banged into Bobby Lee Hurt pretty hard a moment ago. Let's take a look at that block shot a moment ago, Gary. Well, you see the drive coming in here, and watch Hurt. He waits and then goes up as he tries to cut the ball, the offensive player, and Hurt gets nothing but ball. Good block. Now, I would say a pretty serious problem for Illinois State. Mark Swart has picked up his third foul. Brad Duncan has come in, a 6'4 junior from Anderson, but of course he's not the player underneath that Mark Swart is. There's Mark with his third personal foul. 
Duncan is the great outside shooter, but not the inside player for Illinois State. Well, that's going to be some trouble, particularly in his man-for-man, -man where you don't get as much help. They really have to slough off. You see him go back inside there, trying to help. Bobby Lee hurt with an air ball and rebounded by Ricky Johnson. Illinois State continues to out-rebound Alabama and leaves it by two with 5.05 remaining in the first half. Winner will play Sunday against DePaul. Well, Alabama's changing up. We, we talked about moments ago on their defense, 1-3-1. One, one. The next time down, they were 2-3. Now they're back to the 3-2. So they're giving Alistair, Illinois State a lot of looks. Bob Donwell came up, pointed us to his team, and I think he's going to maybe try and draw them out. All right, now what's Alabama's obligation here, Gary? They're trailing. What do they have to do defensively? You watch the official put his hand out. I don't know if you can see it right there. They have to force the action. They don't come out and get them. Official warn them. And from then on, uh, you better come out <laughs> or you can pick up the, the technical. Illinois State by two. This is Hank Cornley from 15 feet. Wooden goal rebounded by Eric Richardson. Bama with a chance to tie. We've had so far five ties in the ball game. If Alabama scores here, it'll be tied for the sixth time of the first half. Four minutes, 15 seconds to play. Alabama and Illinois State with the Redbirds of the Missouri Valley Conference leading the Crimson Tide of the Southeastern Conference by two. You watch Illinois State now. They're really going to drop on the big men inside. The people covering the wings and will be dropping back, trying to help. Boy, you see one big mismatch right there. 6'5", Ricky Johnson on 6'10", Terry Williams. Johnson over Cornley. We are tied for the sixth time as Buck Johnson has four points. Six ties with 3.45 to play in the half. Alabama doing a good job right now, having good patience of waiting and get that ball inside. That's their game. Buck Johnson and Hurt. McKinney, now Brad Duncan. And as Gary told you earlier, he doesn't know any range. He might hit it from 30 feet. We get a foul. I believe Buck Johnson has picked up his first foul, a number four against the Crimson Tide. That's it. Johnson's first, four against Alabama. Nobody on the Alabama team has more than one foul. There's Buck. Well, we've got a call timeout. Three minutes and 29 seconds remaining to play in the first half. The Alabama Crimson Tide and the Illinois State Redbirds are just as they started out, all even. We'll be right back. Just as we were at the start of this ball game, and the clock shows three minutes and 29 seconds remaining to play. As we mentioned, Gary, at the top of the telecast, these are the number eight and number nine seeds of the Midwest Division, so, or the Midwest Regional, so why shouldn't it be this close? Well, that's just where it is, and there we see a, a score, Northeastern 66, Virginia Commonwealth 64. You know, Northeastern, Northeastern and Louisiana Tech have the longest winning streaks in the country, eight apiece, and you saw very quickly the Moorhead State Louisville game. Alabama trying to get the steal now as and we get traveling call and that may be it is the third turnover against Illinois State. Kind of strange Gary to think about some of the big name powers in college basketball but right now the longest winning streaks in the country are eight Louisiana Tech and Northeastern hold those longest streaks. A lot of people probably wouldn't guess that. Would no, they? <laughs> you're right. Three minutes seven seconds to play. Look at the hustle and drops uh, by Illinois State. You see McKinney from the point. He's dropping way back there in the hole. They just swarm the big. I got five guys within uh, six, seven feet of Buck Johnson. And Brad Duncan has just picked up his first foul. Brad, of course, is on in relief of Mark Zwart, who picked up his third foul. That's number four against Illinois State. Gary, the shooting percentages are way below the norm of these two teams. 45% for Alabama, 40% for Illinois State. We well, certainly are. We said uh, two good shooting ball clubs. Uh, Illinois State is best shooting team in history, both free throws and field goal percentage. So I guess it says something for the defense we're seeing, doesn't it? They're getting that shot uh, down there. Alabama has good patience coming to the wings and then down along the baseline. It's just a matter of Alabama hitting. Well, we have our sixth lead change of the first half as Buck Johnson's sixth point puts Alabama back up by two, 26-24. So we've had six lead changes. We've had six ties here in the first half. Brad Duncan, there's his range, 27 feet. Brad Duncan with a 27-footer. He said one of the big things he's done since he's been there, he came in just with a jump shot. But he's worked on his defensive ball handling, brought that along very well. Of course, if you're playing for Donawald, you're going to have to play defense. Seven times the ball game's been tied, and now we've got another lead change as Terry Williams, a six foot ten senior from Elkmont, Alabama, gets his eighth point, and Alabama goes back up by two with two minutes to play. 
The lead has changed hand now seven times and it's been tied seven times. That's the time remaining in the first half. Under two minutes. This is Michael McKinney, Brad Duncan. Ricky Johnson penetrating again. Got the shot up. It didn't go. And out of bounds with it is Lou Stefanovic. Stefanovic got the rebound, but he stepped out of bounds. Bob Donawal. 41-year-old head coach of the Illinois State Redbirds. Three years they've been in the Missouri Valley, and they've got two championships, one outright, and this year uh, co-champions with Tulsa. Buck Johnson, who is hot. He's hit his last two shots. He's got eight. We get a foul in addition to the basket, which is going to count. That will put Alabama up by four. As Wimp Sanderson looks up to check and see, make sure the basket counts. Darrell Neal picked up the foul, his first. Alabama now has five fouls, but they're spaced out among five different players. And Illinois State brings in their seven-foot freshman, Bill Braxick, B-R-A-K-S-I-C-K. A seven-footer, 250-pounder from Flanagan, Illinois, replacing Lou Stefanovich. Braxick got a slow start this year, broke his foot preseason, so missed a lot of drills. And uh, as a seven-foot freshman, uh, he needed to have that uh, practice done. Duncan couldn't get that one to go, and Bobby Lee hurt rebounds. Alabama now with a four-point lead with a minute four to play in the first half. A game that saw Illinois State break out to a six-point lead early, or Alabama, I'm sorry, to a six-point lead. And once Illinois State caught up, four points has been the widest margin either team has been in front. Less than a minute to go. Alabama looking right now like they're trying to spread the, the Illinois State defense. 43 seconds, 42, you see the clock traveling. So there's a turnover called against Bama. So the turnovers are even at three apiece. Wimp Sanderson, 46-year-old head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Turnovers always pain a coach. <laughs> Don't know whether it was just coincidence or not, but both coaches wore green coats tonight. <laughs> they both have their colors of the school are red, so they both wore green coats. <laughs> I bet they didn't talk about that, Gary, do I'll you? I bet they didn't either. <laughs> 25 seconds and counting. It is 30 for Alabama, 26 for Illinois State. This is Michael McKinney for Illinois State. Alabama's in front, so they don't have to do anything defensively. And obviously, Illinois State's going to go for one final shot. Down by four. Wimp Sanderson over there. He's hollering cover on Brad Duncan. Make sure he's spot up on him. Loose ball. McKinney gets it with four seconds. Shoots. Alabama comes out of there with it. And will lead at halftime by four, 30 to 26. So Alabama seized an early lead. Saw Illinois State come back, go out in front, and then Alabama takes a four-point lead to intermission, 30-26, to 26, here at the Devaney Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. So that's the end of the first half with our score, the Alabama Crimson Tide of the Southeastern Conference 30, the Illinois State Redbirds of the Missouri Valley Conference 26. We'll be back after these messages with our halftime program. Well, Gary, right now, Alabama has increased their shooting percentage to better than 50%, and although they started out awfully well, they kind of slumped a little bit, but they picked it back up. Well, they did, and you see the shooting there. The big thing is, and then the shooting percentage, Illinois State only 38.2% to Alabama's 51.9, but Illinois State does have a rebound advantage, 19 to 15. Ironically, in this game, free throws, Illinois State never shot a free throw, even attempted one. Alabama had two. They're two for two from the line. So that's uh, the zone for Alabama doing a good job protecting himself. And Illinois State playing excellent defense in it man for man. Kind of destroyed our theory at the start of the telecast, didn't it, about all that free throw shooting. <laughs> of course, that could still happen. But here we've got a, the number three team in the country, Illinois State, in free throw shooting. And they don't get an opportunity. And Alabama, I think, was the best in the SEC. And they shot only two in the first half. It's 30 to 26, and using the alternate possession rule, Illinois State down by four. We'll start off the second half. One change in the individual scoring. Buck Bobby Lee Hurt had 10 points in the first half to lead all scores. And Michael McKinney shoots and misses, and Buck Johnson grabs the rebound. And Williams there at the top, the point of that zone, uh, forced McKinney to put a little extra shot or arch on that shot, and it came up short. We have a score for you. Virginia Commonwealth on a shot at the buzzer has beaten Northeastern 70 to 69. There's Bobby Lee Hurt, and he now has 12 big points. 6'9", 240-pound junior two-letter man from Huntsville, Alabama. 
And the Crimson Tide has, I believe, its biggest lead of the night, six points, 32-26. I think they led it one time 12-6. to So they match that six-point lead again. Mark Zwart playing with three fouls. We should mention that. He's the only player on the floor with more than one foul, and he has three. Big number 45 for Illinois State, the big blonde center. This is Stefanovic, Ricky Johnson, Michael McKinney. Those guards for Illinois State just continue to try and penetrate. It's just kind of uh, They're hunting hit and, and run, right? <laughs> hunting and pecking. Michael McKinney runs it down after Richardson. Do you kind of get tired of playing defense after a while, Gary, in that zone? You just kind of get a little impatient? Well, you know, most people think a zone you can lope, and in a zone, you've got to work harder than you do man for man because you're always making the moves. You're never away from a position where you have to slide and, and make it a defensive adjustment. Michael McKinney with a long outside bomb. It's still a four-point lead for Alabama, 32-28. That's six points for the 6'1 junior from Gary, Indiana, Michael McKinney. Richardson into Buck Johnson. Button, button, who's got the button? Hank Cornley. Ricky Johnson pulls it out. We're two minutes into the second half. Four-point lead for Alabama. See the discipline of Illinois State that time. We had Ricky Johnson over the side with a wing with a wide open shot. A lot of clubs or players would have taken that, but they're going to wait and get the good one. Stefanovic shooting and missing, and Buck Johnson rebounding for Alabama. Hurt almost stepped out of bounds, not quite. Richardson with a bomb, it wouldn't go off. And McKinney runs it down well for Illinois State. Good hustle by McKinney. Illinois State trying to cut the Bama lead to two now. This is Hank Cornley, who's been kind of quiet lately. Zwart going for the rebound, and Bobby Lee Hurt takes it away from him. See that time, Stefanovic coming in there trying to set a back screen where he could take it to the, uh, the baseline for Cornley and free him up for the shot. He got the shot, didn't go down. This is Terry Williams, Eric Richardson, Buck Johnson. Cat and mouse game with those inside people for Illinois State on the defense. Uh, cover your man and then drop quick inside. That was Darrell Neal who took that air ball shot. And now again, Illinois State trying to cut the Bama lead from four to two. Just getting underway in the second half. Less than three minutes gone. Less than four minutes gone. Good penetration by McKinney who shoots that knuckleball again. And you can see McKinney there as he penetrated. He kept looking for defensive pressure to come. He just kind of floated, looked, saw that nobody was going to take him and put it down. McKinney has the first two baskets for Illinois State in the second half. He leads the Redbirds in scoring now with eight points. Well, there's some muscle inside with Hurt and Cornley. Some bumping going on. Yeah, that's right. It? They've switched the uh, defensive assignments there. Was Ward having three fouls? They're trying him on Buck Johnson. Lynch. Oh, excuse me. I was going to say he opened the ball game, of course, against Hurt. And I think we're going to get traveling or a three-second violation. There is Bob Donawald. In his six years, the head coach at Illinois State, he was working a little bit on uh, Ron Spittler, the Big 8 official, <laughs> as he walked down the sideline. 32-30, Illinois State with a chance to tie it now. McKinney has scored the only four points for Illinois State here in the second half. 16-06 to play. Well, Alabama in the first half gave them a lot of different looks in that zone, but so far they stayed at 3-2. Hornley. Bobby Lee Hurt with a rebound. 15-50 to go. Frank Fallon with Gary Thompson at the Bob Devante Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. Scene of this Midwest regional battle between Alabama and Illinois State. 15-41 to play in the, in the ball game. 32-30 in favor of Alabama. And we get a foul away from the ball. I believe it's on Lou Stefanovic of Illinois State. That is his first and number one against the team. Alabama had a four-point advantage at halftime, 30-26. to and Illinois State has outscored the Tide four points to two here in the first four minutes and 32 seconds of the second half. Eric Richardson inbounding for Alabama. Out to Buck Johnson. I asked yesterday if Illinois State ever zones on the inbounds pass. They said never. It's man for man all the way. <laughs> Boy, you really got to believe in it to man to man as much as Donawal does, don't you? This is Terry Williams. Into Eric Richardson. Alabama up by two. 15 and a half minutes to play. Buck Johnson who's going against Wart. And it's going to be against Johnson. Let's see if they give him the basket. It's an offensive foul against Buck Johnson. No basket. 
So Zwart playing with three fouls, Gary, uh, did his job. He certainly did. Wimp Sanderson throwing up his hands. Little fake there, brought the defense out, and Buck Johnson, you see him just driving in to Zwart right there, backing into him, and I think it's a good call. So Zwart averts the bullet, and it is still a 32-30 lead for Alabama. Ricky Johnson, who hasn't really shot very much tonight, uh, Gary, their number one gunner. That's right. It's, again, I think the zone uh, uh, stifles him a little bit, and he likes to penetrate, and there's that swinging hook from the baseline. Zwart got one of those from the uh, lane a little earlier in the ballgame. Foul, I believe, is on Stefanovic. In the first half, Ricky Johnson took six shots, but somehow I don't see to be, I don't be, I'm not aware of him taking that many shots. There's Daryl Neal back in for Alabama. Number 40, Daryl Neal in for Alabama. The foul on Stefanovic was his second and number two against the team. And also coming in the lineup now for Illinois State is their outside gunner, Brad Duncan. As you saw, Daryl Neal also in for Alabama. Stefanovic comes out for Bob Donawal's team. 32-30. Alabama in front. There's Stefanovic. Born in Yugoslavia. Stefanovic came over and he's about seven years old and has a chance to try out uh, for the Yugoslavian Olympic team this summer. Number 30 for Alabama is Terry Conner, a 6'2 freshman out of Birmingham. Alabama against that man-for-man -man defense running a double stack on both sides of the lane with a point man up front. Buck Johnson shooting and missing and a foul called on... I think it's going to be on Cornley. When he went up for that rebound, he cleared the man out with the offhand. There you look at Cornley right there, number 52. His first, third against the team. Watch the action now. Zwart doing a good job with three fouls. Notice him take his hand away from there to keep from getting that fourth foul. The ball got right there. Cornley with the left hand shoves off the man. Terry Williams who picks up the foul. We have a timeout. 14-42 to play. 32-30 Alabama up by two. Louisville has advanced with a victory over Moorhead State. Danny Crumb's crew. There will be 32 teams remaining in the NCAA playoffs after tonight's action. And right now, our time is 14.42 left. 32.30 in favor of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Bobby Lee Hurt has returned to the lineup now for the Crimson Tide. And there's Terry Williams. He's been kind of quiet until he rips that one home. That's well, miss points for Williams. Mismatch there, 6'10 uh, Williams over uh, Michael McKinney, 6'1". Alabama reestablishes their four-point halftime lead. And McKinney with that knuckleball shooting and missing. And got the rebound. Great hustle by McKinney. But on the alternate possession rule, well, where's the error? I don't see an error. Do you, Gary? No, they, they got an official over there. I just saw him point, and it'll be uh, it'll belong be to Alabama, Alabama's ball. But normally you have an arrow sitting right. up there, but tonight we don't have. So we'll have to remember the next alternate possession will go to Illinois State. Alabama up by four with 14 minutes and 14 seconds to go. You get one four offense again by Alabama as they try and... Cross, bring uh, Buck Johnson to the top, down to low, trying to get it inside those big guys. Neal shooting and missing. Cornley rebounds for the Redbirds. Off to McKinney. Zwart. This is where he's tough, Cornley, right there. He gets it in and around the paint. He can maneuver and take the ball up. Big, strong body guy. 6'7", 225 pounds, senior three-letter man out of Columbus, Ohio. Alabama. And it is a two-point Bama lead. Alabama's done a pretty good job of keeping Cornley out of that middle with that zone. And we've got a foul call, I believe, on Bobby Lee Hurt. And if so, that is his second. For the 6'9", 240-pound Alabama pivot man. Two team fouls against Bama, three against Illinois State here in the second half. 34-32, winner plays to Paul on Sunday. Both of these teams have already played and lost to DePaul by narrow margins. Bama by one, Illinois State by three. Good feed inside by Bad Duncan, and Cornley couldn't quite hang on to it. So Alabama still up by two, almost seven minutes into the second half. Eric Richardson. Buck Johnson. But Johnson, a good job there. When that pass came in, he took it right back out of there, dropping back on him. That'll make that defensive man respect that pass and maybe not come back to pass. Nice, soft shot by Bobby Lee Hurt. Well, we told you that he has a chance to set an all-time Alabama field goal percentage record. Right now, I think he's running ahead of that, isn't he, Gary? 
Well, yes, he is. 66.3%. Uh, uh, former record around 64%. And the Tennessee, Tennessee's Dale Ellis held a conference percentage at 65.4. Turnovers. One apiece. And Illinois State winds up with the ball and a chance to cut the lead down again to two. Alabama got a turnover, then Illinois State got one. Turnovers have been pretty pretty minimal. Illinois State with six, Bama with five in the ball game. Well, it's been a well played basketball game by both clubs. Not many fouls. Not many turnovers. Again, Illinois State's turned it over six times. Alabama only five. Eric Richardson. We've not been tied since we were tied at 26 late in the first half, and there have been a total of seven lead changes to go along with those seven ties, but everything has occurred in the first half of that category. Got hurt this time. Got him cleared out on the weak side down low, but he likes to go back out. Swart doing a good job with three fouls. Richardson shooting and missing. Swart rebounding. This is Michael McKinney. Ricky Johnson, who just hasn't been able to get many shots here in the second half. And again, Illinois State trying to cut that lead down. It is four. Neither team scored in quite a while. We've been stuck on 36-32 for quite a few moments, but Brad Duncan shoots and misses. Alabama, two on one. <laughs> Taking it to the hook was Darrell Neal. Bob Donowell very unhappy, saying no way. And he thinks his man has possession. Let's watch it. Neal brings it here. You see McKinney coming over, sliding. Stan maybe moving a little bit more. Neal right up over the t top and slams it down. McKinney with those feet moving picked up his first foul. Four against and Illinois State. There's Wimp Sanderson whose teams, as the graphics showed you, has had Alabama in the NCAA playoffs for the third consecutive year. Back in the ball game now for the Alabama Crimson Tide is Terry Connor. Ricky Johnson trying to penetrate. Bamboo with a six-point lead. Neither team has led by more than six. This is Alabama's third six-point lead of the night. That last play, I want to check it. I thought I heard the public address system say that the foul was on Neal. They charged the foul there and gave the basket. We'll have to check that out. It looked well, like the man, right, Gary. Looked like the man did have pretty good uh, defensive position. So you're saying that the uh, foul should have gone to the... Uh, to Neal on the offensive player. Okay. I thought it... All right, I'm going to mark it that way. It is 38-32. Bamba with a six-point lead. Now we've got a foul, I think, on Buck Johnson. It is a player control foul on Johnson. That is his third. Now Wimp is up, and he can't believe it. Again, our officials tonight, referee Booker Turner out of the Pac-10, the umpires Ron Spittler from the Big 8, and Glenn Schempel from the Atlantic 10. Doing a good job, too. Two of those three fouls on Buck Johnson have come on the offensive uh, foul, and the two of them in this half. And we saw that similar play moments ago. Ricky Johnson, now Brad Duncan, who likes to shoot him from way outside. So the 6'4 junior from Anderson, Indiana, he gets his second basket of the night. It's 38-34 Alabama. So it's the same as the halftime lead. We've played almost 10 minutes, and the four-point Alabama lead at halftime has remained virtually the same. Williams shooting and missing. Bobby Lee hurt with great position. And a foul picked up by Illinois State. It is Michael McKenna. McKinney. Overheard moments ago, Wimp Sanderson talking about his club turn the box. And I think what he's trying to say is go down low, box to box. And this, they're operating out of that 1-4. And they rotate uh, Buck Johnson uh, and Hurt going down to that box area trying to post them up low. He got a quick shot of Michael McKinney replacing his plastic mouthpiece as he went back into action after drawing his second foul. We're down to the 10-minute mark, exactly. We have exactly 10 minutes to play in the ball game. It's 38-34, Alabama by four. Gets work back on Hurt again inside. I'm looking for him to go there. He has the three fouls. Ricky Johnson knocking the ball out of bounds. Now we're going to have a cessation of hostilities for a moment. Nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining to play in our ball game. The Alabama Crimson Tide continue to hang on to a four-point lead, leading the Illinois State Redbirds 38-34, 9.50 to go. Now we want to take this opportunity to thank tournament manager Don Bryant and tournament media coordinator Tom Simons from here at the University of Nebraska 
Our thanks also to athletic director Ray Perkins of Alabama. Head basketball coach Wimp Sanderson and his staff and sports information director Larry White. And from Illinois State, athletic director Dan Gormley. Head basketball coach Bob Donawald and his staff and sports information director Tom LaMonica. There's part of the Illinois State crowd that's here watching this one tonight. Both teams have a good following here at Lincoln, Nebraska. Number 30 for the Crimson Tide is Terry Conner, a 6'2 freshman out of Birmingham. Alabama with Eric Richardson. Out of bounds, turnover against Richardson. Now the Illinois State bench doing something that's kind of a throwback to football, I guess, Gary. He's talking to somebody upstairs in the in the press box. Well, one of the other clubs I've seen do that in the Big A Conference is Norm Stewart at Missouri, and they get a man up high where they feel like they can get a, a better shot and see the floor better and see something, pick up something that they can't from the bench. That is only the second basket of the night for the 6'5 junior from Indianapolis, Ricky Johnson, who came into the ball game averaging 14 points and had taken the second most shots in the ball club. And he has only four points tonight. But it is a two-point Bama lead. 38-36. Bobby Lee hurt again. The big guy now has 16 points, and I'm telling you, his field goal percentage has got to be phenomenal tonight. He does an excellent job in there, and Zwart has really done a pretty good job defensively against him inside, uh, trying to keep him from the basketball. And of course, now playing with those three fouls. Look at Duncan. Duncan is unbelievable. That is his third bomb from out in the parking lot. And it's still a two-point ball game with eight and a half minutes to play. 40 to 38. Alabama by two. Brad Duncan with six points and all of them from 25 feet or longer. There they make those X crosses on that offense. You see Buck Johnson down the, on the box along with Hurt. Good steal. Ricky Johnson to the... No, he passed it off. But the McKinney for the basket were tied. What a feed to Michael McKinney from Ricky Johnson who very wisely... Dumped it off at the last moment and we're tied for the first time since it was tied at 26. 8.05 remaining. Bama 40, Illinois State 40. Winner plays the ball on Sunday. The loser says, see you next year. That's what's exciting about this time of the year. Uh, one ball game and you either advance or you go home. And Terry Williams off the glass. Didn't he use that glass nicely? Oh, and at 6'10", the defensive man came from behind. He had to take the ball down and pump it and then come back and get it off the glass. Good touch. Well, Six, just amazing, the guy 6'10", the way he has the touch outside. 12 points now for Terry Williams. And Cornley. McKinney. Ricky Johnson. Oh, that first step of his is beautiful. And he makes the basket. What a great first step by Ricky Johnson, and he suddenly heated up. The last couple of trips down the floor, and now Illinois State is tied at the 42 with a chance to go in front. And Ricky Johnson, I think every time he gets it loose and open as a defensive man, you have to defensive fake him, try and stay down, because his first initial move is to try and penetrate. Hey, let's watch Ricky Johnson. If you can get a close-up shot here of his left wrist, he, he suddenly, his left wrist just falls back just before he shoots. This is most unusual. The way he shoots with that left hand. Just before he shoots, the left hand just... See it? Like he just brings his wrist under. He cocks it, and they worked with him this summer to do that, to get a follow through, because he's a stiff wrist shooter uh, on his field goals. And they said, well, you've got to get back and get some finger and wrist action in. Since way back when, Illinois State has the lead for the first time. It is 43-42, and that's the first time that the Redbirds have led since early in the first half. Here's McKinney on the seal. McKinney from 15. And McKinney got on his back, trying to get the rebound. That'll be team foul number five against Illinois State. Bama has also committed five here in the second half. It looked like, I think Zwart's talking to McKinney right there. It looked like to me like Zwart was open on the break, and uh, McKinney didn't see him. And, of course, Bob Donawal, the coach in the green jacket there. Bob wants a little Maalox or something there, doesn't he? 702 to play. I'm Frank Fallon with Gary Thompson. We are at... The Bob Devaney Center in Lincoln, Nebraska in the Midwest Regionals, 43-42. Illinois State just grabbed the lead from Alabama by one. Alabama trying to come back and change it again. Alabama had nobody back to throw the ball into that time, and everybody come racing back all of a sudden. Eric Richardson to Buck Johnson. Oh, there's another steal. And a holding foul called against Buck Johnson, his fourth. So we show the Alabama sophomore, the first player with as many as four fouls, the turnovers now. Alabama has turned the ball over six times here in the second half. 
nine overall. And watch the drive by Buck Johnson. See Ricky Turner coming or Johnson coming from the blind side, gets him across the arm. Book, Booker Turner, the official, was on this side of the court in perfect position to see and make the call. That's four fouls on Buck Johnson, and it is number six against Alabama. And now Illinois State with a lead of one with 6.38 to play, 43-42. Winner plays the ball on Sunday. The Illinois State with a one-point lead after playing catch-up for all the night long. This is Ricky Johnson, Brad Duncan. Mark Zwart inside to Cornley. Cornley over by the hurt. Cornley's got 10. And Illinois State's up by three. Both of these teams trying to avoid what happened to them last year, and that is elimination in the first game of the NCAA playoffs. Uh, Wim Sanders has said, I'm not happy to see you two guys again. We had that ball game, and uh, they just did not play well at all in that game last year. I think it was Lamar that eliminated right. Alabama by about 23 points. They'd had a tough SEC tournament that year. They had played, uh, I think it was four ball games prior to coming in. Eric Richardson with a shot that missed, and Illinois State, with under six minutes to go, has the ball and a three-point lead. Well, and Alabama went man for man the last possession, and this time down, Neal got lost, got lost on defense as they made the, uh, the defensive switch back yep. to man for man. I think we forgot. Brad Duncan hits the long-range bomb, his third of the second half. And Illinois State has raced to an unprecedented five-point lead here in the second half. 5.33 remaining. It is Illinois State 47, Alabama 42. We'll be right back. Hello again, everybody. Frank Fallon with Gary Thompson at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. And this has been a quite a second half comeback. Gary Thompson by Illinois State down by four at the half, down by as many as six on a couple of occasions. And now they're in front by five. Well, it's been the thieves, uh, Michael McKinney and Ricky Johnson. You see the turnovers there now. Alabama nine, Illinois State. And McKinney and Johnson forced some of those turnovers with steals and did a good job, converted them into uh, to points and give Illinois State this five-point lead. Eric Richardson outside. Alabama now trying to play catch-up. Alabama down by five. This is Eric Richardson. Buck thing, Johnson. thing for Alabama right now, the tendency when you lose the lead to drop behind is to hurry things. You've got to still have the patience and get the shots that you want. Missing twice, but that one's going to spin. No, spinning out of there. And it is Illinois State's ball. Alabama had three shots at the ball, and it would not go down. There's Webb Sanderson. Trying to exhort his ball club. So as of the moment, both teams for the entire game, Alabama 49%, Illinois State 43%. We've only had three free throws shot tonight. Two by Alabama, one by Illinois State, and all three of them have been made. Illinois State now with four minutes and 45 seconds to play, leading by five. Let's see, Illinois State, this is what they like to play against normally is man-for-man, man, run the regular offense. They'll run the motion motion game. Boy, they floor it. A couple times we've seen the kids slick, uh, slip. Diving for the loose ball, and it is, oh, a what collision. What a collision. It'll be a jump ball this time. It'll belong to Alabama. Zwart and Bobby Lee Hurt. Hurt at 240, Zwart at 215. <laughs> And, boy, they've been banging on each other all night. <laughs> Swart reaches down. Good sportsmanship gives him a hand. And, and a great no call right there. Two guys going for the ball. A lot of times you'll see a call uh, made on that particular play. Foul call. But I thought it was a good no call. Bama with one more rebound. And here's a steal. And it appears as though McKinney is hurt. Richardson went in and was fouled by Ricky Johnson. And McKinney went down. He's hurt. He got a finger in the eye. That's... McKinney got a finger in the eye as the teams came back down the floor on the steal. Now the foul is on Ricky Johnson, number 24. That'll be team foul, number six against Illinois State. Bob Donawald, who is very unhappy. He thought there should have been a foul. I think actually it was a case of where Richardson reached in for the ball, got the ball, but also got McKinney in the face. Bob Donawal can't believe there wasn't a foul called on uh, on Richardson at the point of the steal. And that really hurts when you catch a finger in the eye. But what happens, that play is made so quick right there that you cannot, uh, as an official, really see that, that happen. 
All right, here's that steal with Richardson being pursued by Ricky Johnson. Ricky Johnson does a great job of trying to get there and beat him to the defensive position, but he goes up with him, gets him on the arm. But the foul, I think, was pointing. You see the official come in and move that he had bumped him out here. So there should be no uh, free throws awarded on that particular play. Well, there's a little claret there on the towel, but I don't know that that necessarily is from this particular injury. That might be from another one. Well, that foul is on Ricky Johnson as you look at Wimp Sanderson, the Alabama head coach. It is 47-42 in favor of Illinois State. Four minutes and 15 seconds remaining to play. Bob Donawal pacing up and down in front of the Redbirds bench. Michael McKinney has really been a spark plug for his ball club here in the second half. He came out and has scored three big baskets, including the first two of the second half for Illinois State to keep his ball club right in it, and now they're up by five. And he's disrupted Alabama with some steals in there. He's their assistant steal leader for this ball club. One. Now we can watch Richardson there. Number 11 is Eric Richardson. See him slap the ball right there, and I can tell with a finger... As he was slapping the ball out of his hand, you see Richardson go down. And the big thing now is whether uh, Richardson, with his vision, can stay in there, whether that eye stays blurry. That'll be the big thing. You see him. I'm sure they got ice on that. Uh, he's a key man to loose. Well, they have brought right loose Stefanovich back in the ballgame, the 6'8", 220-pound junior. But that really changes the complexion of their ball club because you've taken out McKinney. The little 6-1 guard and put in a 6'8", 220-pound forward. Williams for Alabama. That's his 14th point. And the tide is cut it down to three with 4.08 to play. Now without McKinney, they've got to have, they've got one guard in the ball game. Well, really two, I guess, with Johnson and Duncan. But the big men are having to help bring the ball down for Illinois State. Alabama looked like a, a 121 there, a 1-2-1-1 press. Illinois State trying to protect the three-point lead with three minutes, 50 seconds to play. Ricky Johnson working on Terry Williams. Stefanovic being guarded by Daryl Neal. This is where you might see in this man-for-man, man, uh, Ricky Johnson come in to play a little bit more with penetration or Cornley down inside. Three and a half minutes to go. 47-44. Illinois State by three. Bama led by four at halftime and up the lead to six on two occasions before Illinois State began to run. See a lot of in this motion offense picks it down along the baseline or a uh, high man coming down and picking low and bouncing out, and particularly for Brad Duncan. Boy, and remember, you don't want to necessarily foul Illinois State to try to send them to the free throw line. They're third in the country in free throw percentage, 77.5%. Williams went for the steal and missed it. His momentum took him away out of the play, but Illinois State was not able to attack. Uh, the other four players for Alabama covered up pretty well. Clock under three minutes now. Two minutes and 55 seconds to play. Three-point lead for the Missouri Valley Conference co-champions, Illinois State, over the Southeastern Conference representatives, the Alabama Crimson Tide. And what's happening here right now, Illinois State's running a lot of clock. 2.40 to go. As far as team fouls are concerned, Alabama has committed six, so the next time they foul Illinois State, they'll send them to the free throw line. The next foul would put Illinois State to the line, shooting the one and one. So Alabama's problem is pretty tough right now, Gary. That's right, you said the third best shooting club from the free throw line, Illinois State. Off the foot, so we'll bring it in play again. 2.14 to go, 57-54. And over on that Illinois State bench, they are still administering to the left eye of Michael McKinney, who caught a finger in that left eye and was replaced by Lou Stefanovic. That's the time remaining, 2 minutes and 14 seconds. The Illinois State trying to run the clock, preserve that three-point lead. Ricky Johnson! He stepped out of bounds! Oh, on a simple inbounds pass play. They simply overthrew Johnson. He slid and got his foot on that baseline. That was, that was a tough call for the official. Let's watch this play. Officials are trying to chase it down from behind. He slides. The ball, the ball hit yeah, the baseline. Yep, I think the ball hit on the line. It was yep. a close call. An excellent call by Ron Spittler, the big eight official who was behind the play, but he saw the ball hit the baseline. So Alabama comes up with a chance with two minutes to go. There's the alley-oop to Bobby Lee Hurt. 18 points for the big center, and it's a one-point lead with a minute 53 to go. When that lost possession there in the inbounds play turned out to be a big possession, a big play in the ballgame. 
A tripping call against Alabama's Buck Johnson. He may be gone. If the call is on Johnson, I show him with five. It is on Johnson. That is number five. So the sophomore from Birmingham fouls out. He scored a total of six points all in the first half. And he fouls out with a minute 45 remaining. So Alabama now. Terry Connor will come in the ball game, the 6'2 freshman from Birmingham. This is the first half of a doubleheader here. We've got two key players out of the ball game right now. McKinney, of course, not out with foul trouble. He's got hit in the eye, and they're having to hold him out. But for Alabama, their leading scorer, Buck Johnson, 17.4 ball game. He's sitting it out from here on in. Gary, look again now as we watch, watch Ricky Johnson. Watch him just suddenly cock that wrist. It just suddenly pops back under before he shoots. Right there. <laughs> That's really most unusual. That was a big miss as Alabama comes up with the ball. And now a chance to go in front with a minute 42 to go. 47-46 in favor of, Alabama, of uh, Illinois State. Johnson. Alabama with the ball. And Johnson, an 81.7% free throw shooter despite that, uh, that form that really looks strange. You'd rather have him at the line, I guess, than anybody in the ball club, but he missed a big one and one. And Bama's going to call their first time out. So we've got a minute and 24 seconds remaining to play, and that is Alabama's second time out. So they've got one left. Illinois State has not used any of their three timeouts to this point. And Gary, we talked about Illinois State being the third best free throw shooting team in the country, and you mentioned that. Ricky Johnson is a better than 81% shooter. That was a very, very big miss. It was, but, you know, there's pressure situations all during the season of games, but there's something about the NCAA. There's just a little added pressure. Jeff Mullins, third in the country, I think, 91.1%, and he went to the line, missed a one and one in the ball game uh, last night again with St. John's and Temple, and so there's a lot of pressure on these young kids when they go to that free throw line. Well, let's go back to a moment ago and look at the basket by Bobby Lee Hurd on the alley oop. Here comes the alley. There's alley. And, the and here comes oop. <laughs> Oops, a little late, I guess, on this one, isn't he? Right, but Hurt, a great job there of going straight up on the jump and keeping away from the foul as Wart had inside position on him. And uh, Hurt, of course, a bigger leaper and a better jumper, was able to get over the top and get the ball. Well, we mentioned earlier a little bit about the great job that Don Bryant and Tom Simon and his people here at the University of Nebraska do in in staging this Midwest Regional and certainly our appreciation to them. Illinois State, as we mentioned a moment ago, with all three of its timeouts, and Alabama has one. You know, in the televised game, each team gets only three, not the regular five. A minute 24 to go. It is 47 to 46 in favor of Illinois State, but Alabama has the basketball. Those three timeouts for Illinois State uh, to the one is definite advantage to them right now. They got the lead if they're able to keep it. You can always use that one of those timeouts to, to save a possession if you're in trouble uh, with defensive pressure by the opposing team. Well, the whole season now coming down to the next 75 seconds. A one-point lead for Illinois State. Alabama has the basketball. Big possession here by Alabama because if they feel against this ball club, zone is their best defense if they can get get the shot here and get ahead then they can go back and play that zone they had to come out when they were trailing and play man for man 55 seconds remaining 50 seconds to go I'm Frank Fallon with Gary Thompson we've got only 46 seconds to play here in this Midwest Regional it's 47 46 Illinois State now Alabama on a bucket by Terry Williams takes the lead by one with 37 seconds to play as the lead changes hands now for the tenth time of the ball game. Boy, a 6'10 guard, and they run the pick for him, brought him around, and had him wide open for about a 17-footer. 25 seconds to play. Alabama 48, Illinois State, with three timeouts remaining, decides to use one of those. So Illinois State calls their first timeout of the ball game with 24 seconds to play. It is Alabama 48, Illinois State 47, but the Redbirds from the Missouri Valley Conference will have the ball when we come back to play. In the matter of timeouts, Alabama has only one remaining. Illinois State has two remaining. When Frank, you see the turnovers right there. Illinois State 9 to Alabama's 12. But the big play in the ball game, momentum turnaround, was that lost inbounds pass where it was just thrown over uh, with no pressure really being put on. I think he just kind of mistimed his jump, got away from him, and went out of bounds. All right, 24 seconds to go. Illinois State with the ball. They're down by one. Winner plays to Paul, and the loser will go home. This is Brad Duncan. Brad Duncan with the ball. 
Stefanovic, 15 seconds to go. There's the time down low. Brad Duncan ducks inside. Stefanovic from 18 feet. Yes. Seven seconds to go. Illinois State back in front by one. That is the first basket of the second half. The only basket of the second half by Lou Stefanovic. The only basket by Stefanovic in the second half. And it puts Illinois State back by one. 49 to 48. Let's look at it again. The big six foot eight Yugoslavian with about an 18 footer. This is his only basket in the second half. Right through the bottom of the net. There are seven seconds left on the scoreboard clock. Alabama will have the ball in backcourt, 94 feet away. They're down by one. The lead has changed hands now, a total of 11 times in this ball game, four in the second half. The latest on that 18 footer by Lou Stefanovic who uh, may be only playing, Gary, because of the fact that Michael McKinney suffered that eye injury. And Stavanovich, of course, had been put on the bench in the first half in lieu of McKinney. And then when McKinney suffered the eye injury, Stavanovic came back in the ballgame and has hit the basket that right now has put Illinois State in the lead, 49-48. to 48. Boy, what a great battle this has been between the teams seated number eight and number nine. We were talking to Dave Hart at halftime about the seating and the drawing of the teams and my goodness what a job the tournament committee did here are the two teams seated number eight and number nine and right now the team that's seated number eight leads the team seated number nine by one point we've got seven seconds left to play and it is alabama with the pressure on them now down by one 94 feet away from tying the ball game or going ahead basket of course would put them ahead and now then, apparently checking to see what the defense was going to do. Illinois State. Illinois State came out and looked at what Alabama was doing defensively and then called another timeout. So each team has one timeout remaining. We've got seven seconds left, and we'll be back with the final seven seconds in just 60 seconds of our own. Two-man offense for Alabama. Well, it certainly has. Of course, Buck Johnson, uh, their leading scorer, out with five fouls, and he's failed to score. And it's been a, it's just been a, uh, a one of those, like you said a while ago, hunt and peck type games where you're just uh, on the defense trying to solve those defenses and taking their time trying to get into position where they want the basketball, and that's down inside for Alabama, and also Illinois State wanting to get it inside two to their to uh, Cornley or with uh, Stavanovich. Here we go. There's the clock. Who's going to take the shot? Richardson will have to take it from 15 feet. He didn't get it. Illinois State has won it. Eric Richardson tried the shot from about 15 feet away on the left wing. And so the basket by Lou Stefanovic turns out to be the victor for the Illinois State Redbirds who win it 49-48 to and keep their hopes alive in the NCAA playoffs. A lot of crucial moments in the last few minutes of the second half. A turnover on a pass on an inbounds play, a missed free throw by Illinois State. But as it turned out, it didn't cost them because when Lou Stefanovic hit his only basket of the second half, an 18-footer from the right side, it caught nothing but the bottom of the net. And with seven seconds left to play, Alabama took a shot by Eric Richardson that hit the rim but wouldn't go down. And Illinois State has won it by a score of 49 to 48 over the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Well, Gary Thompson is on the floor with Bob Donawal, the happy head coach. Well, Bob, happy with a big win in advance here in NCAA play. What was the big turnaround in that second half for you? We shot the ball in that one little stretch with Duncan in on the floor, knocked it in a little bit better, and we came up with some steals that kept them out of their momentum until we lost McKinney, and then Stefanovic hits a big shot. What happened with McKinney, speaking of him with his eyes? The, uh, the Alabama youngster unintentionally uh, got a piece of his eye. I, doubt, I think he's done, but... Uh, just one of those things that happens in athletics. Did you say done? Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if he plays tomorrow. I think the eyeball is scratched. Oh, that's, that'll be a, a... Really tragic, but he played really well, and, you know, injuries are part of it, and we'll just have to go on. What about the play? Uh, it could have been a key ball uh, play in the ball game when you lost the pass from out of bounds. What happened there? Was it just a mistimed jump? It was, uh, and we led him a little bit too far. We went in the backcourt so that we had 10 seconds to get it over, and, and Lou just led Ricky a little bit too far, and I 
think Ricky just didn't react quite well on it and then chased it down. I was really surprised from where the official was, which was in front of the scores bench, that he had eyes that could see whether it hit the out-of-bounds line. Well, we had a replay on it, and they, we were talking about that. They were trailing from behind, but the ball did hit did it? It hit on the line. It was a good call. This was just kind of like two prize fighters slugging it out heavyweights. They're each taking their time attacking one another. Uh, their zone at times bothered us, and then, as I say, we went through that one stretch. I thought the other key was that we didn't let them dominate us on the boards. Their size really creates problems for us, and uh, we were just fortunate that we were able to keep them off the boards as well as what we did and finally come out with a win. Okay, Bob, we're running out of time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll see you later. Okay, good okay. luck to you. Turn now. We got the player. Hank, how you doing? Let me get my hands here, straighten her out. Congratulations, Thank a big you. win for you. Thank we you. talked about you being a key to this ball club, and uh, you had to work hard against this tough Alabama ball club inside on the board. Well, we knew going into the game that they was big and strong, and uh, loved the offensive rebound and going to the boards hard. I thought the key was to the game was we blocking out and keeping the hurt and Johnson off the boards as much as possible. You did a great job on the offensive boards. Probably kept you in there in the first uh, half of the ball game because uh, you were shooting very poor percentage for your ball club I thought I thought that was a very, very big uh, point that we uh, that we kept keep doing that and uh, that we keep them off the board because if we wouldn't they would have just killed us on the boards. they gave you a lot of different uh, zone looks particularly in the first half oh yeah I think that's you know one of the keys to you know trying to stop us you know we got to get that good outside shot whenever we can because a lot of times they sag in on me and I can't get the ball so I think the key outside shooting would, would help us tonight in the start of the ball game against that zone. Well, let me ask you first. I was told that you would prefer play against man for man against those zone defense. I love to play against man for man because I think I'm a lot more uh, trouble with you know one on one you know inside 15 feet and in. I just think that uh, if we go against the man to man, we're hard to stop. You got one of those plays. I remember when you came down on a, a fast break situation, were able to get it and move it and then turn one on one. Right. That's that's kind of movement I like to get. You know, anytime I get my back to the basket with a man behind me, I like to go to work. Did. How about against when you attack, was your uh, game plan to get you on the baseline like in the first half when you were getting some jump shots? Well, th that wasn't really the game plan. The only thing it was is, you know, I have the option of moving out on the floor if I don't think I can get it inside. They were really collapsing on me inside, and I got a couple screens on the baseline. I got a couple good shots. Well, we appreciate you stopping by, Hank. I know it's a big win. you got to go against DePaul. Oh, yeah, I think, you know, that's going to be a tough one, but I think we'll be up for it. All right, thank you, thank Hank. Thank you. Now let's go back to the desk and Hank Fallon. Well, our final score was 49 to 48 in favor of the Illinois State Redbirds over the Alabama Crimson Tide. We mentioned a couple of times during the telecast that Don Bryant, who is the sports information director here at the University of Nebraska, is the tournament manager. And Don, I'm not sure that everybody knows exactly what all's involved in putting on a tournament like this at the regional level. Well, Frank, uh, we started uh, way last summer uh, lining up things like housing, for the teams, housing for the news media, and all sorts of planning with the arena people and the ticket people. We sold tickets last summer and, and got that off and running and just generally uh, have everything ready as nearly as we can to uh, uh, host uh, these fine teams and the institutions and their fans and hope they have a good time in Lincoln and at the University of Nebraska and that they have an opportunity to uh, play uh, you know, some great basketball. Have you gotten over jet lag yet? <laughs> well, it took a while. Uh, it took 37 hours to fly from Sarajevo to uh, Lincoln, and one time uh, a five-hour stretch uh, just to check luggage. So uh, it, it took a while, but it was great to get home. Don, I know that you work very closely with David Kaywood, the information director for the NCAA, looking ahead to the Final Four in Seattle. There's sort of a cadre of you fellas that work with Dave, isn't there? Well, that's true. We have quite a fraternity. Uh, we uh, gain a few and lose a few every year, but uh, I don't know. I think this must be about eighth or ninth year that we've worked together, and uh, uh, it's a great job. It's a tough job, and, and but Dave has everything pretty well planned and his crew at the NCAA, and then uh, we all move in and, and help him uh, uh, do the things that have to get done to uh, make the uh, Final Four the great show, uh, which it is. I, I think it's the greatest show in sports and uh, in America. I just love it, and I, I know the nation does too. It's really no exaggeration to say that that has become the toughest ticket in sports, is it, Don? Well, I think that's probably right. Uh, it's such a great show and the color and the enthusiasm of the fans and the bands and the cheerleaders and, and the great basketball. And, uh, you know, you're seeing a little of it tonight. Uh, two good teams uh, go at each other and uh, 
really fine action and uh, it just gets better and better and better to that final four. Well, Don, always a pleasure to visit with you. And again, our congratulations to you and your assistant, Tom Simon, who have done such a great job in, in taking care of all of us. And uh, now you're halfway home. Well, uh, we're, we really love having everybody here, and it's fun to be a part of the NCAA tournament, believe me. Thank you, Don. That's Don Bryant, who is the sports information director here at the University of Nebraska and the tournament manager. Our final score again was Illinois State 49 and Alabama 48. Gary Kenhaf, Lou Stefanovic, who didn't come to this country until he was seven years old from Yugoslavia with his parents. And there's the shot of his lifetime right through with seven seconds left to go. And that put Illinois State out in front, 49 to 48. Eventually, Alabama brought the ball down the floor. Eric Richardson tried a baseline shot from about 12 feet away. The shot bounced off the far part of the rim, and Illinois State is home free with their first victory in the NCAA playoffs, 49 to 48 over the University of Alabama. Well, Gary, I mentioned a moment ago, looking at the individual scoring, how strange it was. Here is a victory by Illinois State when nobody scores over 10 points. You get 10 from Cornley, 10 from Michael McKinney, 8, 7, and 6. Nobody with more than 10 points on the winning ball club. Well, it's it's good balance by uh, good balance by those uh, by those teams right there, particularly Illinois State, and that's what can bring you through in a tournament play. I think you have to rely more on uh, a balanced club than say one or two players. You know, too, Gary, thinking back to the way the ball game moved up and down the floor, Alabama had a six-point lead, I think, on three separate occasions in the second half, and yet, uh, obviously, Illinois State stayed right with it until they came out on top. Well, they did. They continue to play the same type of uh, basketball that they'll always play, tough defense, and as Joey Meyer said, man for man, but with a lot of zone principles. Well, let's see how the final statistics showed. Uh, Illinois State took six more shots, made one more field goal. Shooting percentages a little bit below what we would expect from these two teams. But again, the their defensive work probably had something to do with that. Defense, and I just think the pressure of this game. It's such a big game when you get into NCAA play, maybe not quite as relaxed as normal season play. Ball, the game well officiated. Only three free throws shot by these teams. The rebounds, three advantage to Alabama, 29-26. That might be the key right below that. Alabama turning the ball over three more times than Illinois State, and those three possessions might have been enough to make the difference in the ball game. Well, I think that's exactly what it was because those two guards for Illinois State caused the turnovers, and as I remember, they converted those into points off those steals. Now for Gary Thompson, this is Frank Fallon saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. Our final score again, the Illinois State Redbirds of the Missouri Valley Conference 49, the Alabama